Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you once again for tuning in to uh, Facebook Live here on the Promise LA page. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Pastor Daniel Newcomb. I'm coming to you uh, this afternoon to uh, share a word which God has put upon my heart, share a series that God has put upon my heart, really. And um, we are actually barely on this. This was the third week, but we're on the second character of what we call our superheroes a series. And this is a series that that uh, was started that, that that when it was started to uh, grow on my heart to, to put together, it, it was really a desire for all of us to realize that as we go through these characters in the Bible, as we go through them, uh, we, we realize that, that they're just ordinary people just like you and I. They're ordinary people that were used by an extraordinary God. You know, I know our misconception can be that that uh, as we look through these uh, characters saying, oh, I could never be used like that, or these were special people, these were people that that uh, that were super obedient or had super faith. And, and, and what I want you to realize is this, is that these are the same people that deal with the same issues that we deal with, the same sin problems that we do, deal with, the same fears that we deal with, but yet they were used by God. And so the... The conclusion I want you to come up with, come out with at the end of this whole series, and maybe even after every message, that if God can use them, He can use you and I, Amen. And 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 last week we 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 started uh, talking about Moses, and um, Moses was a man who, if if you remember the story, that uh, Moses was grew up in in the land of Egypt during a time when the nation of Israel was starting to grow and multiply. God started to bless the nation of Israel by, by bringing out more people and, 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 and creating a multitude out of the nation. And it was part of that promise that he gave um, Abraham that he was going to make him a, a father of, uh, of, uh, of many nations. And, and that's what God was starting to do while, while Moses was born in the land of Egypt. And they were starting to grow so much that the Pharaoh says, you know what, if if they start to grow more, then, then they will become politically strong. If, if they start to grow, then we can start to have some opposition that that uh, if they didn't like the way things are going now, they can side with uh, with one of our enemies and 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 they can and they can revolt against us. They can rebel against us, and we will no longer become a nation. And so Pharaoh decided that he was going to oppress the nation of Israel. He was going to oppress the the Hebrew uh, people. He's going to put them into slavery. He's going to make them work. Um, he was going to uh, put quotas on their backs that they 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 couldn't possibly perform. And, and yet the Bible says that even with that, that God still blessed them more. And so what Pharaoh decided to do is that he was going to go and 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 he was going to have every male child born of a Hebrew woman to have them killed. He started with the midwives, and the midwives says, no, we can't do that because we fear God. And so he, he sent people out and, and to, to start killing young boys. And see, because, you know, if they, if they killed the young boys, the, then they're no longer, then sooner or later, the Hebrew nation, the, the nation of Israel will no longer exist. But if they, they, they have the, the young ladies there, then they could, they could be used to raise up Egyptian uh, children. And so they started to go and, and kill these young Hebrew boys. And, and, and what happened from there was that the, the mother of Moses saw that Moses was a good looking man, is what the Bible says, and, and, and started to hide him. And when he couldn't do that anymore, when she couldn't do that anymore, she decided to put him in a small ark and, and sail him down the, the Nile where, where none other than Pharaoh's daughter found him. And so uh, Pharaoh's daughter finds him says, you know what, I'm going to raise this boy, and I'm going to, and I know this is a Hebrew, uh, a Hebrew child, and so I'm going to go and take uh, a, a lady from the, from the nation of Israel to raise this child, and, and I'm going to pay her, and it happened to be none other than Moses' mother. We said that last week, and you picture you parents out there, picturing getting paid to, to raise your children. Isn't that an awesome blessing? Isn't that an, an, an awesome favor of God? And see, little do we know that that for 430 years, while the nation of Israel was under oppression and slavery, they started to cry out to God and said, Lord, deliver us from, from this opposition, from this oppression. 
from the slavery. And, and all this time, God was raising up Moses to be that leader to raise them out. But, but things didn't go well for Moses because, you know, as Moses was growing up, he, he saw his, his uh, a fellow uh, Israelite, a fellow Hebrew man getting picked on by an Egyptian. So he jumped the Egyptian, killed him, laid out his body, buried his body so not, nobody would find it. But then when he was confronted, he he, uh, he he said, oh, man, they found out about that I murdered this Egyptian. And so he fled to the land of Midian. And so Moses stayed in Midian for 40 years where God called him back. And God called him back and says, hey, I have heard the cry of your fellow people, and, and I want you to go and lead them out of, out of Egypt. At that time, Moses says, no, Lord, I don't want to do it. You know, can't you call somebody else? I can't speak. They won't listen to me. I'm wanted over there. There's all these things that 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 cause fear in in Moses' life that he did not want to go when God called him to go. And so very early in in Moses' life, uh, Moses was known as a murderer. He was known as a bail jumper, and he, he was known uh, for being somebody who was disobedient to God. But yet, as we said last week. Although we know that about the story of Moses and Exodus, when you go to that great faith chapter in Hebrews chapter 11, they say totally different things about Moses. And, 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 and they say they don't talk about Moses being a, a murderer or a bail jumper. They talk to him about being one of the great men of faith. And we were on Hebrews chapter 11 last week. And, and, and last week we spent some time uh, discovering that Moses was was being groomed up to be a leader. And not only was Moses a leader, but he was a leader, a lawgiver, and a liberator. And and really, there's three things that you can remember about Moses. It was those three things, a leader, a lawgiver, and a liberator. Last week, we talked about what it meant for him to be a leader. It, you know, it meant, it meant for him to abstain from the values of the world. It meant from him, uh, it meant for him to embrace um, affliction and persecution it meant for him to doing everything for the glory of christ and, and and if you missed that message last week i would encourage you to go back to that and you know because this is just all review right and and i would encourage you it's i i believe i had a lot of fun with last week's message to be honest with you and, and so i believe it was a very powerful message for a lot of people and so if you didn't if you didn't hear that message or you weren't able to to join us last week go back into our into the archives of uh facebook uh, on this page or you can go into the gospel kingdom tv uh channel on youtube and, and look it up there and um and, and it's a great message today we're going to talk about the other two as we talked about about moses being a uh a leader a lawgiver and and um a liberator last week we we ran out of time and so we didn't finish the other two and today i hope to finish the other two today as we talk about moses and, and so we'll be back in Hebrews chapter 11. So if you have your Bibles with you, uh, turn with me to, to Hebrews 11 as we talk about the, those next two aspects of Moses. And, and, and what I want to do is I want to encourage you to see those, those aspects, those, those characteristics of Moses. Can you see those in yourself? As we go through this great faith chapter about Moses, can you see yourself being a lawgiver? And can you see yourself being a liberator? If you can see yourself, then perhaps maybe you're called to be a leader as well. So before we go into these two things, I want you to think about that. I want you to consider these things. But let's go to God to prayer, as go to God in prayer as we talk about these things. Amen. Father God in heaven, we just want to give you thanks and we want to give you praise. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for the great love in which you love us. That you would that that you would send Jesus Christ to to die on the cross for our sins, because you'd you, you'd rather you would you you would rather pay the price, dear Lord, than to be without us. And I just want to give you thanks. I wanna I wanna praise you, Father God, and worship you for you are good, Lord. Today I just pray, God, that that the very intent in which you have for this mes message, that you would fulfill it. That once again, that you would anoint this, that you would bring power and fire, dear Lord, not just uh, for me, Lord, to speak your message, but but for it to be entered into the hearts of those who listen. Father, I, I just pray, God, that you would receive glory. Once again, Lord God, I just pray that you would hide me behind the shadow of the cross. 
May it be that you would increase and that I would decrease. Get me out of the way, dear Father God, but keep me connected that I, I may have the strength to deliver the message you want your people to hear today. Lord, we thank you, for, Father God, for these stories. We we know, dear Father God, that uh, that you'll use it. We we pray, Father God, that today, as we go through the life of Moses, that you would speak to our hearts today. We thank you. We praise you. We love you, Lord. We thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We, again, we said last week that, that Moses was groomed up to be a leader. And today I want to talk about Lo Moses, the lawgiver. Amen. You know, I know that when we talk about Moses being a lawgiver, we, we have this picture from the movie, The Ten Commandments with Charleston Heston, of how he stayed up on the mountain with God for 40 days. And, and when he came down, he came down with the Ten Commandments. And we picture Moses not only with just the Ten Commandments, but, but with that we all, all the ceremonial laws, all the moral laws, and all these things, all the 600 some odd laws that he gave to the, to the nation of Israel. But yet I want you to look at another aspect because, because in Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse 28, it says, By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. It says that by faith he kept the Passover. Now the Passover is part of the law too, amen? But the Passover, if you know the story of uh, back in Exodus, was given to them not not as a set of rules or a set of ordinances uh, uh uh you know some laws to live by but it was to protect them because you see if you go back to to somewhere around exodus 5 if you know the story and i i'm not going to read it for the sake of time but but god had called moses to go tell pharaoh he took him out of midian right that, that whole time when when Moses didn't want to go, and Moses said, oh, Lord, go send somebody else. Oh, Lord, uh, I can't speak. But yet, reluctantly, Moses went, and he took his family back to Egypt. And, and he went to Pharaoh, and he says, hey, Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, let my people go, that they might worship me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh was like, who? Who's the Lord that I may obey him? And he said, no. And so time and time again, Moses and Aaron went back and said, Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, let my people go. And, and, and Pharaoh said, no. And, and time and time again, Moses came back and he says, God, God says, let my people go. And Moses said, no. And so, so what God did to, to get people's attention is that, that he, 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 he sent out judgments. He, in, in beginning with verse 7 in, in the book of Exodus, he turned the waters into blood. And, and and later on, he, he, he had a swarm of frogs come out. They, they came out of the water. They came out of the land. They, they came out of the food. They came out of every corner of the house. And, and frogs came and lice came. Fly, swarms of flies came. And you thought the Inland Empire was bad, amen? The livestock were killed. The boils uh, were on people's skin. Hail came. Swarms of locusts came, the darkness fell over the land, and, and God would send all these judgments and said, you don't want to let my people go, well, this is what's going to happen to you, and, and therefore God, God told Moses again, go tell them, let my people go, and Pharaoh said, no. And so God says, look, on this night, I, I'm going to kill the firstborn of every family, the firstborn of every male, the firstborn of every livestock the firstborn of every pets. And, and here's what I want the nation of Israel to do. I want you to go and kill the lamb without blemish. And, and I want you to go take the blood of the lamb and, and put it on the doorposts of your house. And, and, and if there isn't a family out there that can afford the lamb all by themselves, I want you to gather into somebody else's home. And, and, and it says when the death angel comes, when they see the, the blood on the doorposts, then they'll, he'll know to pass over that house because they're covered by the blood, amen, and, 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 and not to harm anybody in that household. Think about this. Because it says that by faith he kept the Passover. He was a lawgiver. And, and sometimes I, I, I think that when we, when we see Moses as being a lawgiver, we, we see him as being a, someone who, who, who brings down a set of rules. Some sound who, who who brings a a lot of regulations, laws that that we have to to live by. 
you know, as if God wants to restrict us from having fun. I don't know about you, but that's the one thing that kept me from becoming a Christian in the first place, because I, I, I just wanted to have fun. I didn't want to tell have people tell me what to do. But you, have you ever considered this? That the law of God is not to restrict you, but it is to protect you. Because in the same way that the that that God told Moses and the nation of Israel to take the lamb and 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 and, and kill it, take the blood and put it on the doorpost, so he, that they would be protected by the death angel. In the same way, God is trying to protect you from from living from to to, to protect you from. From from living in a, in a in a way that is not pleasing to him, he's 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 protecting you, uh, he's protecting you from the lies of the devil, he's protecting you from the ways of the world, he's he's protecting you, so to, so that you may hold on to to the promise of God and the and, and the purpose of God in your life. You know, in 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 John chapter six, in beginning with, I'm sorry. Chapter 6, verse 63. It said, Jesus says this, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. He says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit, and they are life. The words that, that Moses came down, it was so to give you life. The word that we we the that we read and spend time consuming in God's word from Genesis to Revelation, they're not laws and regulations. They they are life, and to give you life abundantly. It's a, it's to show you how to give you a life that God has for you. It's to show you the life that Christ came on the cross to die for you. It's to give you a life and life more abundantly. You know, so many times people say. Well, I don't want to read that Bible. It's nothing but a bunch of do's and don'ts. You know, don't, don't you realize that that when you read the Bible, yes, there are a bunch of do's and don'ts. There are a lot of shalls and shall nots. But did you realize that, that God has shalls and shall nots for himself? The Bible says that, 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 that God says in his word that, that he shall not ever leave you nor forsake you. He says in his word that uh, that uh, if the river starts to come, it shall not uh, overwhelm you. If, if the fire is to come, it, it, it shall not consume you. The Bible is not a lot more than, than just rules and regulations. There are promises from God. There are promises to, that, that, to, to protect you from, from the ways of the world that would rob you of things that would... Uh, 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 that would rob you of things that would keep you away from God, to keep you away from his promises, to keep you away from his purpose. You know, in this days that we're living in, I, I, I believe with all my heart that, that God is once again is, 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 is calling out to us, saying, saying to, this, to, to the rulers of this world, let my people go that they may worship me. Let my people go that, that they may come out to me and, and, and honor me. But yet the 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 devil's not going to have that. You know, we call the the devil the 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 ruler, the prince of this world, and he's not letting go. He's he's powerless, but but he's not letting us go. If you if you know some of the studies that I've done here recently on on, um, on spiritual warfare, I said that the devil comes to to discourage you. He's he's already defeated. Amen. He the, he was defeated at the cross at Calvary. Everything the keys were to the kingdom were taken away from him. Jesus has it now, and and he waits for you and I. And, and but but because he's defeated, the only thing that he can do against us, since we're already in victory, that he can come to to discourage you, he can come to discredit you, and he can come to distract you. And I believe with all my heart that all these things that are going on around us. That 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 he's he's coming to distract us. He, he's coming to, to look at the uh, at the pandemic. He's wanting us to look at the uh, at the division. He's wanting us to look at the at, at the economic unrest. And he's coming. To, he wants to distract us with the uh, w with the political unrest that is soon to come. I believe with all my heart. And and he's coming to distract us from all that. And here all this time, God is saying, "Come out of there." Come out of there. Come out of this world. 
you know, let my people go that they may worship me. And God just wants us to come out to, to, to worship him, but yet we're distracted by all the things around us. And, and then there's also another aspect where I just truly believe that God allows this, this to happen. All this in, in this unrest that we're experiencing, this these trials that we have never seen before. That he, he's causing us to see that that this what this world uh it, it can give us really. And, and and what this world is is made of. What what this world will be like with without him. You know, so many times people have asked, they say, uh, you know, why is God doing this? Why is he allowing this to happen? Remember, we kick God out of the schools. We kick God out of the courthouses. We kick God out of the government. We kicked him out of the parks. I dare say there's some churches that kicked him out of there too. And God wants us to show us that, that, that to allow this to happen in the world that we, so that we could see how bad this world can get and we could see how good he really can be. And that should be us as, as, as lawgivers. Not, not that we're just calling people out on their sin, but they're calling them in to a, to a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. He, he, the Bible says that that um, that that by faith Moses kept the Passover. He that's how he was a lawgiver. He protected them from death. He protected them from 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 an eternity without God. That's what being that's what being a lawgiver is. It's not about it's not about giving up a set of rules, but it's about declaring a message, a message that comes from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Being a lawgiver is not is, is is not putting people under condemnation or judgment, but it's about people giving life. It's not about rules or regulations, but it's about life. Jesus says that these words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And and, and for those of you, whether you're a pastor or a preacher, an elder, a teacher, or whether you're just starting out trying to figure out your purpose in Christ, my my prayer for us is, is that as a as a body of believers is that our our our, our law giving message would not just be about rules or regulations, but it would be about life. It would be about hope. It would be about about salvation that's found in Jesus Christ. Amen. The next thing I want to share with you is that not only was Moses a lawgiver, but he was also a liberator, a leader, a lawgiver. A liberator. Come with me to verse 29. It says this by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. Again, go back to, over to the story in Egypt in, in Exodus chapter 14. In Exodus chapter 14, um in Exodus chapter 14, Pharaoh says, Go ahead and go. You know, I don't want all these judgments on my land anymore. I don't want the lice. I don't want the blood in the water. I don't want the livestock to be dead. I don't want the darkness. I don't want any of this stuff. So you know what? You guys go ahead and go. And the Bible says that in by the time we get to Exodus 13 and 14, that Pharaoh changes his mind. It's funny how a hardened heart can stay hardened. Amen. It's funny how uh, even though you come to the realization of the power of God and the provision of God, the hardness of heart can still stay with you. And and, and that's a little side note. But Pharaoh, Pharaoh says, you know what? Call all the armies. I don't want to let those guys go. I'm, I'm not going to let them go. Go back after them and bring them back. Bring, bring them back to the land of Egypt. And so they they go chasing, running after them. And, and the scene is, is that the whole nation of Israel, the whole nation of Israel, is standing on the shores of the Red Sea. And they're crying out. It's like, oh no, they're coming to get us. Oh no, they're coming to kill us. They're gonna bring us back into slavery if, if we could survive this onslaught. They're just gonna we're gonna go back the way things were. Oh Lord, how can you let this happen? They start to cry out for to, to God and, and 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 the Bible says that the a, w a wind comes from the east and the west and it separates the the sea and they're they're able to cross over but you know what i find is that is that the bible says that when they cross over they weren't crossing on 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 muddy ground the bible doesn't say that that they crossed over and they 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 some water was up to their ankles and they had to kind of trudge through the water 
didn't say that they had to go and hurdle through seaweed or starfishes or 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 beach sand that that dilutes under your feet and causes you to fall sometimes the bible says that they crossed over on dry ground isn't that awesome if it wasn't awesome enough that that they see the the wall of water from there to the left and to the right what's awesome is that they crossed over on dry ground there's a message in that because when when god calls us out of oppression when god calls us out of uh, of slavery of sin and death he puts you on dry ground he puts you as a matter of fact he puts you on more than that psalm 40 verse 2 he says he also brought me up out of the horrible pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my footsteps isn't that awesome god doesn't just save you to leave you there but he puts you on solid ground so you can stand. Not, not that you would just lay there and one day and, and, and be a couch potato and one day go to heaven. But he causes you to stand, to have a stature, to be, to be somebody in this life that, that you might give glory to God and bring others to him. That's, see, that's what Jesus does for us. Amen? That's what Jesus does for you and I, that when we come to the cross, when we come to Jesus and we accept him as our Lord and Savior, he takes us out of the pit of sin and out of the pit of death, out of the pit of bondage, and, and he picks us up miraculously. The greatest miracle is that, is that he saves you, people like you and I, and he uses us for his kingdom, and he, and he takes us and he, and he establishes us. He just doesn't say, okay, I'm going to leave you the way you were. He establishes us. He uses us. He makes us a people of renown. We're, we're a chosen people. Amen? A royal priesthood. He, he causes us to, 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 to have a significant life in this world that we might be used by him. You know what I, I also find, find interesting in, in, in this story about not just when when the the israelites came to the to the red sea but if you would do a rewind in exodus chapter 12 in exodus chapter 12 verses 37 and 38 maybe you might want to go there with me but the bible says that what that when when pharaoh says okay i want to get rid of you guys you guys go the bible says that that the nation of israel went over to their their egyptian friends and neighbors to go and ask them for silver and gold and clothing to provide for their trip. <laughs> you know, and the Bible says that they gave it to them. They gave it to them. And so basically what happened was that the nation of Israel, the Bible says that they plundered Egypt. They took them for all that they had. And not only that, is that when they went up out of Egypt, they said there was a mixed multitude that came with them. See, here, here's the point that I'm trying to make. When you walk in this freedom that Christ gives us, when you walk in this uh, in the power of God, when you put, walk in the purpose of God, you can't help but to bring people with you. In verse 38, it says, a mixed multitude came out with them. It doesn't even say that, that they were invited. It doesn't even say that the nation of Israel evangelized. It doesn't even say that they quoted scripture or they discipled them or anything else. But when they saw the power of God and the deliverance of God, they decided that they were going to go up and worship with them. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome how God can use you and I? Sometimes, we don't, sometimes things just happen and we don't even do it on purpose. But yet God uses you and I to reach other people. Things just come. You know, I've been I've been walking in the in, in this what I hope is to be the purpose of God for a while now. And and I've seen how how, how God can 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 use me. And I, I didn't even have any intention. It's just, you know, sometimes I'm just sitting at a table and, and somebody says, Can we talk about God? And sometimes they catch me at the worst of times and I'm like, man, can't you see that I'm busy? <laughs> but yet God put something on my heart and, and we have this conversation. A beautiful conversation about God. And I, and many times I get a chance to pray for people. 
many times I get to to to, to pray them into the 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 good confession that they would receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You know, back when I was back when I was young in my in in my walk, I, there was a song that I always loved. There was a song I always loved. I used to back then it was cassette tapes, amen. There, I mean, it was, I don't even think I had a CD player in my car back then, but it was a cassette tape that I, I listened to this one song that it says, when I think about the Lord, I'm not going to sing it for you because I don't want to scare you away from this video, but the lyric says this. It says, when I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost and how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around and how how he placed my feet on solid ground. When I think about the Lord, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Amen. I, you, you know, I still get emotional when I think about that. I still get emotional when I think about what God did in my life. And see, when, when, when God takes us, and, and, and puts a call upon our lives to, to groom us up and to be a leader, to groom us up into, into being a lawgiver, not, not a law of rules, not a law of regulations, but a law of hope and of life. When, when all that happens, God uses us to be a liberator, like he did with Moses. And we get to, to, to lead people, not into, into muddy ground, not into, into, into ground that's, 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 has water to our ankles but we get to lead them out on solid ground that solid ground is the gospel of jesus christ amen that solid ground is the message that which we proclaim that we hope and that we that we that we grasp us hold grasp on to it's the gospel of jesus christ and, and when we think about what god has done for us how, how he's picked us up and he turned our lives around we could shout hallelujah thank you jesus Moses was a leader. Moses was a, a, a lawgiver. And he was a liberator. My prayer for us today as a church, especially in these trying times, that we would be that. We would follow the example. Now remember, Moses wasn't remembered for being a murderer or a bell jumper. Moses was remembered for being a man of faith. It says, by faith, Moses, by faith, Moses, by faith, Moses, Mo Moses, by faith, forsook everything else behind him. He, he forsook the, the values of this world. He forsook the, the pleasures of that he could have had in Egypt. He forsook all those things and, 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 he, and he saw God at a distance and he says, that's where I'm heading to. I, 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 I know that there are times in this life, like I, like I, like I always said at that, at, at that one encounter where, where Moses saw the burning bush and he was talking to God and he said, Lord, I don't want to go. Lord, I, 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 I don't have eloquent speech. Lord, uh, I'm too afraid to go. Today, maybe that's you. You listen to this message and we, we, we study about the life of Moses. All the things that he had to go through. I believe we're, we're heading to these days where, where uh, it's going to be some of the hardest things we've ever had to face as Christians. I hate to say it, but the Bible even declares that some people will even fall away. My prayer for each and every one of us, we would grasp hold of some of these principles. And we would not be a people that fall away, but we would we would we would grab hold of the message that we that we treasure, a message that that God has has given to each one of us, that 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 by grace we have been given a free gift through Jesus Christ. He's given us eternal life. He's given us salvation. One day our our, uh, our we get to go to the pearly gates and 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 say that we have reservations one day, right? Our, la our names are, are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Those are our reservations to get in. Just like when we go on vacation, we, we, whether it's on a plane or a hotel or whatever, we, we, 
we look to see if there's some reservations out there. We have a reservation waiting for us one day in, 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 the, in, in heaven to be with Jesus. You know, there's a part of me that uh, I can't wait for that day. I can't wait for the day that that uh, one day there there'll be a a big reunion in the sky. You know, at this stage of my life, I probably have seen more people go than I have met here. And 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 I wait I long wait to see loved ones once again. I know that many of us and many of you have, within the sound of my voice, have, have lost uh, people that have gone on home to be with the Lord. But but we have a hope, amen. We have a hope that 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 on the promises of God that that our life does not end here. This world that we see is is not the end. This is not all that there is. And and, and we can we can come to God with that confidence, knowing that He's not a liar knowing that he's not a man, that he should deceive us, nor should he lie to us. And see, that's, I believe that same hope that, that, that we have in, in Christ is the same hope that Moses had. That's how he was able to forsake the things behind him. That's how, why he was able to, to say, you know what, the values of this world are nothing to me. The, the treasures of Egypt are nothing to me. Yes, there's, there's some, some hard times. He, you know, we, we talked about Egypt going through the, the those judgments of lice and frogs and all these other things. But you know what? Moses and the nation of Israel experienced those things too. But yet they endured through it all. And if there's a message that I want to share with you today is that we I want to call us to endure through it all. Moses did. The nation of Israel did. They saw all these things happen around them. The only thing that they didn't endure and that they didn't endure is the is the final judgment of uh, of uh, the the death angel coming because they they kept the Passover feast. Guys, we have a great Passover, and his name is Jesus. If you would write the the uh, if you take his blood and sprinkle it on the doorposts of your hearts, that that when judgment comes and the final judgment comes, that that death will not come upon you, judgment will not come upon you, because. God will look and he'll say, no, you are mine. I remember the day you confessed me. I remember the day that you uh, that you confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I remember the day that, that I wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And so today, if that is you, I just want to pray with you. If you're listening to this message and um, and you've never done this before, but but there's something in your heart when you look at the world around you and you know you've got to know that the time is coming where God is going to put his judgment stamp on this world and he says that this time is no more. You know that there's a day coming when when maybe you take your last breath on this earth. You know, if and 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 knowing that that this world this life that will will soon end and we will be called to to into eternity. My question for you is that do you, do you have that do you, do you have that assurance is is the blood of the Passover lamb Jesus Christ is it sprinkled on the doors of your heart that you would be protected from judgment If not I want to pray with you it, 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 there's nothing magic about the words that I'm going to pray there's nothing magic about about uh you know like as if it was a a recital or a, a, a prayer book or anything like that, but it's what's on your heart. And today I want to plead with you today that those of you who have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that maybe today, today is the day. So what I want to do is I want to lead you into a short prayer. And I want you to ask God to, to, to forgive you of your sins. So that as you confess you of your, your sins to him, that he would forgive you of those sins. And that, and that you would be washed white as snow, like the Bible says. And that you would receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today, if that's you, I just want you to, uh, to pray as, as I lead you into this time. All you got to do is say this. Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. That I have done things contrary to your word and to, and to your ways. 
I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to wash me white as snow. I receive you now as Lord and as Savior, knowing that you paid my price on the cross and the blood that was shed for my sins. I receive you today. I pray that you give me the Holy Spirit that I may live the rest of this life for you, that I may give you glory. Put me upon that rock in which to stand and grant me your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, if that is you and you said that prayer, uh, whether it's here live or whether you, you, you listen to this message later on down the road, you're looking through the archives and this is the message that you, you decided to listen, then I want you to leave us a, a, a note here, maybe on the comment section here on Facebook Live, or maybe you want to uh, send us a, a private message here on Facebook. Uh, you can also do the same thing if you, you're catching this on Gospel Kingdom TV. You can leave a message there um, on YouTube uh, as well, and, and we'll reach out to you. Or if you'd like uh, even a little bit more um, privacy, uh, I guess you could say you could reach us on via email at promiselosangeles at gmail.com. And all you got to do is say, Pastor Daniel, I received Jesus today. And, and, and I want to stay in contact with you. I want to give you some material. Uh, I want to get a Bible into your hands if you don't already have one. Um, I want you to, to be fully equipped to know the, of this decision that you have made. Also, I want to invite you to uh, uh, to like this page. Uh, on here on Facebook, if you're just if you're just listening to it now, that you would um, listen to or, or you know see the announcements that we have during the week, some of the devotionals that uh, um, one of our other staff was going to usually post on this page during the week. That uh, also some announcements regarding our prayer meeting that we have every Thursday night. I would love for you to come and and be a part of that. Uh, over these next few months, we got some announcements about um, how things are going to be going with our our quote unquote Sunday services. Uh, I'm excited to see that, and so um, please stay in contact and stay connected. We're called to be in community with one another, Amen. And so um, I want you to be a part of that. We got some exciting things ahead of what God is going to do. But most of all, uh, you're not meant to walk this walk alone. You're not meant to. First of all, you're meant to walk with Jesus. Secondly, you're 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 meant to walk in fellowship with the with the with other believers as well. And yeah, there's safety in numbers. Amen. And so today, I just I just want to invite you. I want to let you know that you're welcome here. Um, you're we want to welcome you into the com community of believers. Uh, stay in contact with us, please, if you would. And um, you know, again, look for some announcements for the rest of this week. Let me pray with you as we end today uh, and as we look forward to this week. Father God in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for this series and what you put upon my heart and what you've got left remaining here over these next few weeks as we go through different characters of the Bible. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you for, for everything, Lord, that you love us enough, Lord, to reach out to us and that you continue to reach out to us. Bless us, we pray, Lord. Bless those within the sound of my voice. Fulfill their needs, Lord. Touch their hearts. May, may you provide for them. May, may you demonstrate to them that indeed you are God. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Uh, I hope to be in contact with you during the week. Um, and we'll see you soon. God bless.